This week, SpaceX successfully launched a six-batch of satellites for its Starlink constellation, bringing the total number of satellites to just about 360. This week, it was also announced that Intelsat has chosen SpaceX as its launch partner to launch Intelsat 40E in 2022. And in Boca Chica, stacking of Starship SN3 is currently in progress. Starship Update SpaceX has really taken things into overdrive in terms of Starship SN3 development this week. Over the weekend, on Sunday, March 15th, assembly of the aft bulkhead was completed. Just a day later on Monday, the aft bulkhead was integrated into a three-ring stack. On Tuesday, the upper section of the nose cone was mated to the nose cone fairing to form the fully assembled nose cone. On Wednesday night, the three-ring stack common bulkhead section was mated to a four-ring section of the liquid oxygen tank to form a significant part of the SN3 hull. And on Thursday, the three-ring stack methane tank section was mated on top of that stack. In the coming hours, we could expect the stacking of the remaining SN3 sections as well as transportation of SN3 to the launch site where it is now expected to undergo the familiar process of pressure testing. Once this is successfully completed, as confirmed by Elon, the vehicle is expected to perform a static fire test followed by short hops. Rapid Innovation and Accelerated Progress while there's still a need to accelerate Starship development and the rate of innovation as highlighted by Elon repeatedly over the last few weeks, it's also important to highlight here that SpaceX's progress in terms of Starship is still quite unprecedented. Just to recap a bit here, on February 28th, SN1 was destroyed in pressure testing due to failure of a thrust buck to dome well. Within just a matter of days, the company pivoted away from the previous SN1 thrust buck design and the SN2 test tank was rapidly assembled. On March 8th, the SN2 tank successfully passed cryopressure and engine thrust load tests, and now, just days later, Starship SN3 is almost completely stacked. Future Design Changes On Tuesday of this week, in response to a question raised by Raphael Adami on Twitter regarding whether the number of rings on Starship would be closer to 17, as cited in an article on ours, or 20, as estimated from Adami's calculations, Elon stated that that number, 20, is pretty close. Elon also unveiled some new details about future Starship design changes, stating that the design is evolving rapidly. It would be great to flatten domes, embed the engines, and add approximately 1.5 barrel sections of propellant for the same total length. He also mentioned that the current legs are a bit too small. Right now, the site in Boca Chica is really taking shape, as it evolves daily towards its goal of a full production assembly line capable of producing as many as 100 starships a year. Starlink Update On Wednesday, March 18th, SpaceX successfully launched a sixth batch of Starlink satellites, fifth batch of version 1 satellites, into orbit. The launch took place at 8.16 am EDT, this time from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Reusability milestones achieve, but unsuccessful booster landing. In addition to achieving its primary mission, successful deployment of another 60 satellites, this launch also saw SpaceX achieve a number of critical reusability milestones. First fifth flown Falcon 9 booster. The booster that supported Starlink V1 L5 previously supported Iridium 7 Nex, Seocom 1A, New Centaur 2, and Starlink V1 L1. The secondary mission, however, the landing of the booster on SpaceX's drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, did not prove successful this time. Booster Landing Shortly after the launch, in response to the booster landing anomaly, Elon responded on Twitter highlighting an issue with one of the engines on ascent. According to Elon, there was an early engine shutdown on ascent, but it didn't affect orbit insertion. The issue was observed by many SpaceX fans on SpaceX's livestream at around 2 minutes and 22 seconds into launch. It's not quite clear just yet whether the early engine shutdown had anything to do with the failed booster landing. There were some questions that arose whether the anomaly was due to Sunday's scrub launch. When asked if the issue was possibly related to Sunday, he stated that the last launch attempt was aborted due to slightly high power, possibly but not obviously related to Wednesday's launch. He did mention, of course, that this vehicle has seen a lot of wear, so Wednesday wasn't quite a surprise. Life leader rockets are used only for internal missions won't risk non-SpaceX satellites. This is the second consecutive Starlink launch where the booster missed its landing target. According to Elon, the first Starlink miss landing at sea was due to incorrect wind data. Since that launch, though, SpaceX has made updates to its wind prediction software. For now, it looks like we'll have to wait a few more days to determine the exact cause of the miss landing. 
With COVID-19 cases increasing worldwide and the risks and impacts of the virus now looming, SpaceX is really demonstrating its ability to work well in less than ideal conditions and balance risk and uncertainty. Along with NASA, the company is still aggressively working towards a timely launch of Demo 2. In a tweet posted on SpaceX's Twitter on Wednesday, March 18th, the company revealed that together with NASA that they are now targeting no earlier than mid to late May for Crew Dragon's launch with two NASA astronauts on board, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. The previous tentative date for Demo 2 was set at May 7th. Astronaut training continues. Benkin and Hurley are currently still in training for Demo 2. According to a tweet by senior editor at Ars Technica, Eric Berger, in a response to a media invitation for Demo 2, it stated that NASA is proactively monitoring the coronavirus COVID-19 situation as it evolves. The agency will continue to follow guidance from the CDC and the agency's chief health and medical officer and communicate any updates that may impact mission planning or media access. In other SpaceX-related updates, on Tuesday, March 17th, communications satellite service provider Intelsat announced that it has selected SpaceX to launch its geostationary satellite Intelsat 40E, or IS-40E, aboard a Falcon 9 rocket in 2022. According to Intelsat's website, the satellite will provide government and enterprise customers across North and Central America with high-throughput coast-to-coast services. The satellite will be manufactured by Maxar Technologies and will host NASA's Tropospheric Emissions Monitoring of Pollution instrument. The instrument is designed to measure air pollution across North America hourly at high spatial resolution. This is the second SpaceX launch for Intelsat. Intelsat previously partnered with SpaceX as a launch provider back in July of 2017 when the company launched Intelsat 35E, which currently provides coverage to North and South America, Europe, and Africa. In response to the announcement from Intelsat, Vice President of Commercial Sales at SpaceX, Tom Ochenaro, stated that We are honored Intelsat, one of the world's premier satellite operators, has selected a flight-proven Falcon 9 to deliver the next geostationary communication satellite to orbit. Things are a little uncertain right now in terms of the trajectory of COVID-19 as well as the wider implication of the virus for the purposes of this video on the space industry. Many major space companies have already been significantly affected. Despite that, however, SpaceX, particularly the team in Boca Chica, seems to be pushing forward as quickly as possible in order to meet the company's accelerated timelines for Starship suborbital and orbital flights. Teams in Boca Chica are also working around the clock in order to build out the infrastructure needed to support the Starship production line to get to the eventual goal of producing about 100 Starships per year to support the megatons per year needed to make life multiplanetary. The next SpaceX launch, the launch of the Argentinian space agency SEOCOM 1B, is now targeted for no earlier than March 30, 2020. The launch will be the first East Coast Polo launch in just about 60 years. For now though, in the more immediate future, we could look forward to those critical tests of Starship SN3.